Hi, this is Wei Hao from Direct Impact Solutions. This will be a FileMaker basic videos on how to use the while function. The while function was introduced in FileMaker 18 as a new native FileMaker feature that allows the system to repeat a set of logics over and over until a certain condition is met. This is commonly referred to as a loop. Let's try to uh, take a look at the loop, the while function inside the data viewer. At the first glance, you might be intimidated by the number of parameters that the while function asks you to fill in. Or you might be thinking, what's with all these brackets? But don't be afraid. Once you've watched the next part, you should be able to confidently use the while function in your own solution. There's a narrative behind each function. The while function is no exception. It tells a story about a journey. A journey needs to start with someone. So with the first parameter of the while function, we can give the initial values to variables that will be used in the following parameters. Think about these variables that you initialize here as characters that will go on the journey. This is the place where you meet them for the first time and you describe them for the very first time. You can specify multiple variables here, and if you do so, put them inside a pair of brackets. Next, the journey needs a motif. With the second parameter, we tell the function under what circumstances we want to keep the loop going, not to continue the journey. We need to give it a definitive condition here, and this condition should be an expression that will return either true or false. This expression will be evaluated at the beginning of each loop. While true, the loop repeats. While false, the loop ends. And while our characters go through the journey, the journey shapes them. So with the third parameter, we describe what happens each time the loop is repeated. Variables we initialize in the first parameter uh, often get updated or referenced in this section. These variables will retain their values after each loop. So we can see what happens to them throughout the journey. These characters are like our protagonists. You can also define variables that are not initialized in the first parameter. These variables live and die within a single loop. Think about them as side characters. They exist to serve the story. And of course, eventually the journey ends. With the fourth parameter, we define what this entire while function will return as a result. This is like the legacy that our characters leave behind from their journey. Let's look at an example. We have a very simple application here. So what we're trying to do here is to take the string or the input from the input field. And uh, when the user click on get abbreviation, uh, it will take the first letter of each word and uh, put that into the output field. So uh, let's start by add some action to this, uh, uh, to this button. Since the, uh, the action we're trying to do here is to set the value for the field output, uh, we're going to use set field script step here. But what's more important is what do we put in the formula. So we'll start with a while function. And uh, every time I start working with a while function, what I like to do is to break out each parameter uh, like this uh, for readability's sake. And I would also add some comments in there um, to to describe what each parameter is about, just so that I don't forget which parameter am I working with when this uh, formula gets long. And after we kind of set the canvas for us, uh, we'll start thinking about what variables do we put into, or what uh, expression do we put into each uh, parameter. So one thing to know is that you don't have to follow the order of parameters and try to figure out all the expressions that you're going to put into each parameter, especially the first one. Um, so we kind of just add things to each parameter as we goes. 
So uh, for the first parameter, let's think about what we can identify so far. Uh, for this feature, we need to loop through a bunch of words, and uh, those words come from the input field. So we're going to need a variable to take the value from the uh, input field. So let's start by creating a uh, variable and call it the uh, input words. And we use the value from the input field to set it. Uh, once we know what is the input we're dealing with, um, how do we know how long the loop should run or how many loops this function should go through? Well, since we're operating word by word, um, then the total number of loops we should go through uh, should be equal to the total number of words that's in the input. So we can use a word count function here and um, use that to wrap around the input words that we grab from the field to tell us how many words are there in total, which is equal to how many uh, loops that we should go through. And of course, um, we know well, once we know the total number of words that we need to process, we also need to know which word are we currently processing, just so that we know whether we have reached the stopping point. So we're going to have a word counter variable here. And since this is the very beginning of it, uh, since we start on the first word, we're going to initialize this value to be 1. And this is so far what I can think of to put into the first parameter. Like I said earlier, we don't have to fill out the entire parameter with everything that needs to be there. Let's move on to the next section. And if we miss anything, we'll come back and put it in there. So um, the next section is condition. We already talked about it's going to be one loop per word. So it's pretty straightforward uh, to figure out the condition here. It's just going to be the word count should be smaller and equal than the uh, total number of words. So now heading into the logic, this is what we are going to do within each loop. So if we need to get abbreviation, we need to get the letter from each word. And if we need to get the letter from each word, we need a word. So the first variable I'm going to put in there is uh, the word for us to process within each loop. Notice this variable is not initialized in the first parameter because we don't need to carry its value to other loops. This variable will be set within each loop and it will be used to help us calculate the letters that we need. Um, but since it doesn't need to be carried forward, we don't need to initialize it in the first parameter. So how do we get the word that we want to process? Well, we can use the middle words function. And um, since we only need one word at a time, in this case, the starting uh, word should be equal to the word counter. So if you're on the first loop, you take the first word. If you're on the second loop, you take the second word. And then the number of words is just one you know, because we do one word at a time. So after I have that, I need to take out the first letter of this word. So let's do that uh, by setting a variable called first letter. Again, this variable is not initialized in the first parameter because it's going to be set the new value for each loop. So we use a left function here to take the leftmost characters from the word. And then um, we're going to need to store that letter somewhere. So we're jumping to the, the fourth parameter for the result. Since the, uh, this formula is about get abbreviation, I'm just going to call the result variable get abbreviation. And the way we're going to build up this result is to take the letter that we got and append it to the end of the result from the last run. Notice that we need this variable to carry its value to the next loop because we're continually uh, appending values to it. So this variable should be initialized in the uh, first parameter. So let's add it there. And of course, when we first start it, it will be empty as we have, not, we have no result to output yet. And then, um, and after we got our result, we need to move on to the next uh, loop 
And the way we do that is by increasing the value of the counter by one. So this looks about right. Um, I think I didn't miss anything. So uh, let's give it a try. Save it, save it, and So for my own name, it gets WD. And if I use uh, Direct Impact Solutions, I expect to get BIS. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.